This is Twit. AMD Ryzen processor with Radeon Vega graphics launch, which means Ryzen and Vega have hit the laptop world, the world of notebooks. Um, one of the two big announcements we've got for you on the show this morning, Ryzen, the world's fastest processor for ultra-thin notebooks, which given that I just had an XPS uh, 13 with an Intel processor show up on my desk this morning with a quad-core uh, coffee-like processor showed up, or, you know, mm. semi-coffee-like processor, um, it, when are these shipping? How much are they going to cost? Are they as fast as they claim? What's the story, man? So uh, shipping in mid-November, uh, uh, HP Spectre X30, there's a Lenovo IdeaPad, there's an Acer Swift 3, I think, that will ship with it. Those are the three that they've kind of announced. Um, the, here, here's what's interesting about this part, right? So they claim it's the world's fastest processor for ultra-thin notebooks. Um, it is Ryzen CPU cores, quad-core, multi-threaded. It is Vega Graphics. Uh, 10 compute units and 8 compute units are options. Um, they have pretty high base and boost clocks of 2.2 gigahertz and 3.8 gigahertz for the top end part uh, uh -huh. and uh, 1.3 gigahertz on the GPU clock. TDPs are around 15 watts. 12 to 25 is what they say the range is. The 15 watt is the nominal. So there's a little bit of question on, on how much power they're actually drawing and mm -hmm. what their boost clocks and stuff are. Uh, the, the interesting thing is they they basically have they had the best mobile GPU in terms mm -hmm. of something that can be integrated onto a onto a part. Their their advantages over Intel is clearly in the integrated GPU side. Their advantages on the on the CPU side were thought to not be realistic, I guess. Now if you look at Intel, uh, AMD's performance claims, you know, they show themselves slightly behind uh the quad core uh, the new 8th gen Intel parts in single threaded performance, but drastically ahead of the Intel and the multi threaded performance, even against quad core to quad core. And if you think about it, it that kind of logic takes a little bit to get around because the, um, you know, if, if the single threaded performance of Intel is better, then the same number of threads should continue to give Intel the advantage. And that slide that we're looking at there is clearly not the case. The indication, of of course, is that the clock speeds of the Ryzen mobile part are higher in this configuration than the clock speeds of the Intel configurations. Um, now, I will caveat that blue bar number of 498 for the Cinebench score with, we have, we have quad-core 8th uh, gen systems here that are showing over 600 in that same benchmark um, repeatedly. Uh, so the, the 498 seems to be like on the lower end, AMD is presenting, you know, I talked to them today, they, that's a number from a system that they have multiple systems of in their labs, it's a legitimate number, uh, but it seems like they just happen to have gotten or chose to get the lower end number of the systems that are available out in the market. And that's what's, that's what's confusing about mobile processors in general. Um, even though they might have the same specs, from, you know, you might see the Intel Core i7-8550U integrated on five different systems. You might get five different results for performance because it's all about the thermals, the tuning, sure. um, how, how high they can stay at those clock speeds before they have to pull back a little bit to maintain, you know, surface temperatures or whatever it happens to be. Um, so you can't quite get a an a apples to apples comparison as easily. You kind of have to look at a handful of systems to get an idea. Uh, if you look at graphics performance, it's it's really not close between Ryzen Mobile and Intel Integrated Graphics. Do they have a slide the here? Looks at GPU performance, them, right? It does. It's like three X, right? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The what AMD can do is without a discrete GPU, they can now match the performance of an Intel, you know, Core i5, Core i7 part plus a discrete NVIDIA GPU up to a certain level, right? So, you know, in this slide, they're comparing it to a uh, GeForce 950M. Um, you know, the GeForce MX150 is a little bit more modern, and you'll see that in some of the 8th gen and 7th gen uh, Intel systems out there. And it's probably going to be a little bit faster than what what, what Ryzen Mobile can do, uh, but not drastically so. And, you know, AMD is, is in my conversations, conversations with them, they're not saying this is a gaming laptop. Uh, but what they are saying is that if you do 
casual mainstream gaming, you're going to get a much, much better experience than you would on an Intel integrated system, which makes sense, right? And that's what that slide shows. League of Legends, Dota 2, Overwatch, CSGO, Quake Champions. You know, sometimes you're running at 1080p, sometimes you're running at 720p. Um, you get you get some advantages, right? The, the architecture is just better, it's faster. You get better driver support from AMD than you do from Intel on these games, right? They have this this whole discrete GPU legacy that's using the same architecture. So in theory, you should always be a little bit better with the AMD Ryzen uh, than you will with the Intel graphics. Um, so that that's their that's their big push. And what's this is the first time in, uh, AMD has been able to really come into the 15 watt thin and light market with a competitive product in many years. Right? They've had APUs. They've had you know, other CPU GPU combinations where the GPU has always been pretty good, but the CPU has been pretty weak and the power efficiency was pretty bad. So battery life was not fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. They, they, in theory, having not tested these systems uh, myself yet, ha are closing a lot of that ground. Um, I still have some questions. You know, there, there's more in this story about some of the uh, architectural stuff they have done in terms of being able to run each core at its own clock and voltage, having discrete uh, voltage planes between the different segments of CPU, GPU, and how power efficient they can make it and what advantages Infinity Fabric might offer. And that's all really important. But at the end of the day, it comes down to, for this class of system, what is your, what is your performance? What's your battery life? And then what mm -hmm. kind of extras can you offer? And I think that gaming and graphics storyline is going to be one of those extras that AMD offers. So if their battery life is competitive in the same form factors, um, then they should be able to do pretty good here. Now, like that spider graph is really interesting. The blue line represents Intel. The red yellow line is is the Ryzen 7 2700U. Like there's a couple of these that I'm not real big fans of how they came to these numbers. Like the power efficiency in the in the upper left of that uh, uh, spider graph shows that the Ryzen part is more power efficient. The, right. the, the number a, that they that calculated for that. The, yeah, it, oh, it does yeah, because that, all, they're, all they're doing is taking the Cinebench score and dividing it right. by 15 watts for each. And one, I, I kind of think that their Cinebench score that they show for themselves is running higher than 15 watts, even if it's for a short period of time. And the number that they showed for Intel for Cinebench is lower than numbers I've seen. So, you know, I, I, I hesitate to believe that they AMD's... they massaged the results to give their part <sighs> the best possible portrayal for purposes I'm, of I'm marketing and creating I'm buzz? saying that might be the case. That could possibly be the case. Um, and, and it's, you know... Everybody does it, so that's what our role here is as reviewers, as editors, to try to look at these types of things and find out what the truth is. And honestly, again, we we might get all three of these AMD systems in, and they might all three perform with to different degrees, right? Like if you look at the, um, I didn't put it in here, but the there's a there's an HP and Acer and a Lenovo. The Lenovo is the thinnest, lightest model, but it, it has single channel memory which is a significant detriment to integrated graphics performance, right? So we don't yet know, you know, that Lenovo might have the longest battery life um, compared to the three, but you might be sacrificing a lot of that GPU advantage that you had. Maybe you're only 1.5X as fast or 2X as fast as opposed to 3X as fast as Intel parts. So um, there's still a lot to learn here between now and say end of November, you know, Thanksgiving timeframe when these systems are in the, in the channel and they're selling regularly. Um, but they're, but they're, they're competitive Intel's con or AMD is confident. Um, and it looks to be a very, very good part. Uh, they just, you know, in this space, battery life is kind of King battery life and mobility are King and, and thin and lights and uh, two in ones. So that needs to live up to their claims and their uh, uh, demands, right? So we'll see if that is the case. And uh, hopefully the other thing that has saddled AMD's mobile parts in the past is they've been built into lower cost, non-premium designs, right? So there's, you know, cheaper build, lower quality screen, you know, crappy track pads. Those types of systems are what you would current you would usually find AMD APUs in if they can get past that stigma. You get in the HP 
you know, uh, Epic or whatever it is, the the X360, you get in the Acer Swift 3, um, that, that's when you'll start to, you need to increase the brand cachet of, uh, of Ryzen in this space along with it. So, you know, hopefully they'll be able to do that. And I think we'll know probably within a two to three week time frame what, uh, what they're able to create out of all this. I am seriously curious. Yeah. I am very, I mean, as, as somebody who's spent a fair amount of his own money on AMD Ryzen processors on the desktop, I would, I, I love the idea of them beating out Intel. I am very curious to see if they can deliver on uh, the power consumption side of that because Intel spent a lot of time and a lot of money building up a lot of intellectual capital or, or an intellectual portfolio around yeah. uh, low power processing. We'll see.